Welcome to ESPN 2's Week of Madness, presented by Harley Davidson. For 67 years, the NIT has been a showcase for college basketball greatness. The 2004 edition has featured more of the same. Slow, kicks in the corner, this could win it. He hits it, and St. Louis has won. Jackson, a deep three. Jackson. Tonight, four teams, one common goal. Who will be next? It's semifinal action in the NIT from Madison Square Garden, representing the Big East, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, and out of the Big 12, the Cyclones of Iowa State University. Let's take a look at the brackets, and this is the way the final four looks. After this game, the first one we are about to see, 20 minutes uh, later, we'll tip it off between Oregon of the Pac-10 and Michigan of the Big Ten. Hi, everybody. Rod Franklin, along with young Jimmy Dykes, <laughs> the governor, Bill oh. Raftery. And tonight, the constituency yields to the governor. He will talk about <laughs> Rutgers first. You have the floor, my Age friend. Age before beauty, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Jimmy Dykes and I would both love to be able to shoot the ball as well or as often or within the scheme of the offense yeah. as the two outside performers, Ricky Shields and Quincy Doobie, two for Rutgers. Jimmy, they've gotten better because they're using their screens. Uh, Doobie's got great range. They get the ball and are prepared to shoot. Whether they're stepping into the shot or coming off the curl, they've got great range, anticipation, and their shot selection has become better. And I think that's the key to this team improving and playing well in the NIT. Okay, Jimmy, it's your turn. Talk about Iowa State and the fact they've got a couple of huge wins at Hilton Coliseum at home, but on the road, they have not prospered as their coaching staff would have liked. You know what, though? Both teams start three guards. I think Rutgers gets 21 points a game from the three ball. Iowa State only gets 12. So Iowa State has a little bit more attack the rim mentality from their perimeter, especially a young man by the name of Curtis Stinson, one of the best freshmen probably that most people have never seen play this year. Terrific guy from the perimeter. A hard guard, a dominant crossover dribble, can really get to the lane and attack you. Playing with a banged up left hand tonight, but I talked to him before the ball game. He said, it won't stop me from scoring. So let's take a timeout. 67 years of history of the NIT already in the books. Will 68 be a good follow-up? ESPN2's presentation of the postseason NIT. Brought to you by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. We are moments from game time here at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Right now, let's go to Jimmy Dykes with Rutgers head coach Gary Waters. Coach, you all have gone from a 37% three-point shooting club on the year to a 50% three-point shooting club in this tournament. What's been the difference? Well, I think they got some more confidence and uh, they understand what they can do now. It took them a while to understand that. And, and in the Big East, you know, a lot of people come after you, so you got to be prepared. What's the one thing you stress to your ball club in that locker room about Iowa State? Well, they get out in transition, and so we must shut that down. If we don't, we're going to have a long night tonight. All right, Coach, good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Good luck to uh, Coach Gary Waters. And here are the starting lineups for this game number one, the semifinal game number one. For Rutgers, Lamazana, the man they call Axe, Quincy Doby, Marquise Webb, and Ricky Shields. And the starters for the Cyclones of Iowa State, Broman and Jake Sullivan, along with Jared Holman. Curtis Stinson, and number 11, Will Blaylock, at the guard positions. And our star watch, gentlemen. Uh, Lamanzana, not too bad putting it on the floor, Jimmy. I've really been impressed with his shot selection, his ability to play multi-positions, and also his shot-blocking ability. Starts a lot of their runouts. Well, I'll tell you what I like about Jackson Broman from Iowa State. Uh, he's a punishing rebounder, Raph. He goes to get the rebound out of his area. He's got great speed for a kid 6'10", and he's young as a basketball player. Only his fifth year to play. I think he's got a terrific upside. 
So Lamazano will jump it up against Roman. And in case you are not familiar with these two programs, Rutgers in the all scarlet uniforms and Iowa State in the white with the gold and red piping. And as you can imagine, it's only about 45 miles away with a large contingent on hand here to cheer for the Scarlet Knights. Semifinal game number one is underway. And Iowa State. Not Franklin. And company goes. 2-3 zone. What kind of minimum principles. <laughs> I wondered how you were going to get I'm glad you're here to remind me, Jimmy. <laughs> you'll see a lot of zone. Of course, uh, Wayne had been at Syracuse and has tweaked it a little bit. We'll get into it a little bit later, Jim. Roman tipped the pass and caused the turnover. Rutgers aggressive in the half court. Man to man. Terrific on ball defensive club with their length. Quickly inside to Broman, he'll get the easy two. And the first thing that I noticed, gentlemen, pushing Stinson to his left to make him dribble with the cast hand. Now they all know how difficult it can be. Deep in the corner, three-pointer up the way, and there's Quincy Newby. They shoot from downtown, and there's no Freddie Brown here. They've got great range and stretch the day. Boy, Gary's right about his club being confident, huh? <laughs> A quick trigger club. Broman. Holman gets bumped out of the way, and the rebound comes down to Lamazano. Jimmy, I think the big thing is that foul line area, and you might see right here, Lamazano's got this kind of a range, plus he'll be the guy in the three-second area making plays. Oh. Roman with his fourth point. <laughs> Terrific push, huh? By Blaylock. Wow. Great confidence, too. Lamazano, Lumi. Iowa State was a man-to-man -man defensive club until this year, so they've grown into their zone defense as this year's gone on. Wow. If he shoots at any further out, he's got to pay tolls on the way. <laughs> well, I, I think they're downtown, but maybe out of bounds, too. Inside to Holman. Jared puts it on the floor, the right-handed hook. And he's got it going, as does Iowa State, with their shooting percentage in the early going. And they're extending the floor here. They call themselves the Bruise Brothers. And we will see that reflected in their physical play. Well, against any zone, though, you've got to get ball reversal, try to hit that high post area, establish inside exactly what they go to. That's the area, absolutely, because they played a three-point shooter. That's something Bayheim's gotten better at, I think, over the years. They want to take away the three, force you to take twos. You know, it's interesting. I think not only does the zone defense get better during the game, the zone offense gets better during the game as well. One begets the other if you got people who can ring the bell. The head coach for the Cyclones of Iowa State, first season at Iowa State, was an assistant coach there, also was an assistant at Syracuse. Very familiar with this part of the country because he grew up here, Bill. Yeah, but he and uh, Stinson back home, they've got a lot of requests for tickets from friends and family. Top-notch recruiter, wasn't he? He sure was. Good staff. staff. I think it'll show at Iowa State, too. Wise decision, nice trap, something different that they do. That's how he his second hoop, and that's a tough play. He and Holman, the two guys that face off against each other, very much alike. And a nice play by Doobie. You know what they do, and, and we both can relate. You know, Jimmy Dykes is out of this. They play old. <laughs> I mean, they really do. They look like guys who, they'll be 50 doing the yeah. same things. They're not going to elevate. And a lot of pizzazz in their game. Just solid. Sullivan. Sullivan will be tagged and chased for 40 minutes. Stinson trying to force it maybe a little bit, loses it out of bounds, and it'll go right back to Rutgers. And, and this may be a little bit of a problem. He's got 24, 25 relatives and friends in the house, and he wants to show what he can do now that he's in trouble. And, and I think Jimmy's point with the hand, too. He looked like it was difficult once he put the left on there, but you've got, you're trying to impress people. You just got to relax. Lamazana, he hooks it on the floor, moves it about five feet closer, and hands it. Now, he's an NBA prospect because he can hit that shot. These guys got a terrific skill set for a 6'10 youngster. Absolutely right. We can put on a nice step wow. through. Oh, left, huh? Wow. A little lingerie on the deck. Jackson Froman. Jackson, a great story, as Jimmy said. Only in his fifth year of organized basketball, he was a soccer player. Good bloodlines. His dad started off at UCLA. Oh. 
left side again is Newby. He was back court. <laughs> that was a violation. Hey, early in this game, I do believe. <laughs> doobie, doobie, do. <laughs> well, Iowa State may have gone to the well once too often there on the middle give and go. Nice job defensively for the start of night. Shields will take it the distance. Too easy. Score. Jimmy, you know who made that basket? On the other side, on the Iowa State bench, was Doobie. Nobody could come off him and help on the drive. Boy, three guards in transition for both clubs can really get up and down this floor. 11 to 2 is the run total right now. Roman, he's going to take it up strong and he'll score. He really knows how to play post offense. He puts it on the floor. And Jimmy, you've seen them enough, and Ron, he's a fadeaway jumper like Will Chamberlain used to. Maybe we'll get a look at it. Same 2 3 alignment wrap, but they'll, uh, they'll, they'll trap out of it. They'll run and jump some out of it, but it doesn't matter when you're just jumping up and knocking down shots over the top. Marquise. They'll, they'll make you play man, I think, Ron. I don't know if you can. Uh, and now it's going to be interesting to see if Wayne and then will come out of it because the matchup 2 3, also a diamond and two. And Jimmy's point about them knowing how to play man to man, I've seen them play man to man full, so they know the principles. Holman with the turnaround, and he's fouled by Lamaza. And here is something that, it, when you look at negatives for each team, that they have to be careful of. Lamazano foul trouble mm -hmm. cannot happen, and they also need to get points out of Adrian Hill. Now, there's and, a guy that's improved, Ron. Excuse me. And, and conversely, for Iowa State, Holman is at the line, and Crowman cannot get into foul trouble. They got to have input from the perimeter by Jake Sullivan. I think uh, Gary was telling both of us he was given the MVP or most improved. Yeah, it's uh, Adrian Hill, that is. You like kids uh, looking at Jared Holman on that free throw strike when their coach describes them and says his greatest skill, he plays hard. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why this young man's on the floor at that free throw strike right now. He will out effort you if you give him the chance. Do you imagine saying that though? Everybody's supposed to play. Yeah, again, that, isn't that the truth? Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Coleman unlucky on the shot, rolled it around, it came out. So it's a 16 to 11 start in a ball game as we're about to go into 14 minutes left in this opening half. I think it's amazing where you have to play these people as, and you're going to get open foul line jumpers consistently because of the threat deep. Sullivan back out front to Roman. The bounce pass, nice look to Holman. Tough pass for a tall guy, though. Sullivan for three. And Roman comes away with the loose ball. Well, he's quicker than you think. Holman squared to the hoop, and he'll knock that down off of him. Allow him to square the shoulders from that distance. Speaking of playing hard, how about that Jim Roman really getting after it? Made that goal for his partner. They play well off of each other. Terrific little buddy game they got working on the interior. 13 points between the two of them already. In fact, all 13 points. Nothing from the perimeter. And that steps trying to make a quick decision. So let's take a timeout. 16-13, Rutgers on top. Here are two of the Iowa State points and two of Roman's eight. Yes. So 16 to 13, Rutgers on top. Well, Ron, they're getting it done by the play of their perimeter, Ricky Shields, number two. That's not his strength. This guy is a pure two guard that can jump up and stroke it. But right now, he and Shields, uh, Doobie, just terrific confidence in their stroke. This is a club that's shooting 50% from the three-point line in the NIT games. Both those guys are averaging 20 so far in this tournament. I started to say Shields in the NIT, 13 of 20 from beyond the arc. And, Ron, I was thinking Shields only averages three-plus free throws a game. You had mentioned their stretch. We're going to stretch Ron's patience by the time the night's over with the two of us chatting <laughs> away. But they're stretching the D. They should be able to get a lot of easy hoops, I think, either the foul line or underneath. Roman and Holman, as I mentioned, all 13 points for Iowa State, and they are six of seven from the four. Rutgers from beyond the arc, 50%, two of four. And I mean, the two have been from way outside. Automatic switch on the perimeter here. I like Rutgers' link defensively. Uh, Doobie's got some, and I think you're thinking of him a lot, and uh, as well. 
against the so Blaylock knocks home the three. They have done a good job of blanketing uh, Jake Sullivan so far. Here's Doobie again. Come on. Come how on now. How about the one bounce, a little screed. Oh, my goodness, 22 feet. Chuck and duck. I asked somebody from Rutgers today, I said, tell me about it. And he said, no conscience. <laughs> well, you know what? I think their shot selection is better, though. I mean, people think you're crazy when you see shots like that. Nice slip to the goal back. Whoops, and a turnover. Look at the spread by Doobie. Webb. When they get a layup, it sort of shocks you, Jim. Yeah, it does. How about Doobie running the, running the floor to the spot up three on the weak side? Had a chance for a two on one. How about this one, Jim? A little screen. Yeah, that's a, I love how they get their uh, shoulders squared to that rim. Look at that release, rotation, and that all the always ends up with a terrific result. Number 13. First foul on Jake Sullivan. And the first team foul. Rutgers also with one team foul. Bill, being a former New Jersey coach yourself, how important was it to sign Marquise Webb, the first uh, New Jersey recruit signed by Waters? Well, I think it starts to give him a little strength and a little confidence, too. I think the same thing happened with the football program there. Uh, they start to believe in the coach. Uh, some more talent, obviously. You, you don't have to go to the Midwest, which he did when he first started, carry or to the junior college ranks, and I think it'll solidify a base for him, something that's necessary. The way Rutgers well schooled on what they are trying to get done inside. And let me tell you a great reaction there. Oh my goodness, catch. Oh, and shoot. Get out and get him, Jimmy Dykes. Well, he led the uh, New York City Public Schools in scoring at 35 points a game two years ago. I can see why. Uh, Broman over the top, I think, or maybe they're going to get a check. I know they got Broman. And, you know, the interesting thing. His sophomore year, his sister, Alexandria, uh, the uh, Quincy Doobie sister, had Jack Ringle as a guidance counselor, the coach of Grady. She said, you know, you ought to look at my brother. He can shoot. So he, was, he, he watched him in the gym. He said, you want to come out. The next year he came out as a junior. And then as a senior, they won the city championship. I mean, it's unbelievable. There must be so much talent in the city this size. Oh, and, uh, he hit 18 out of 21 three-pointers in a high school game. Scored over 60 points twice. This is a 9-0 run for the Scarlet Knights. Thomas Adam put it on the floor, and they'll turn it over. Here's Stenson, the bounce pass in the middle, and really taking a chance right there in the reach-in is going to go against number 50, Marcus Jefferson, who would just come into the lineup. His no. first to team second. No, I've watched Stenson. That's not him. He's not on his game right now, Jim. No, he's not, but i tell you who is. Those Rutgers perimeter shooters. And again, early in this game, I do believe. All righty, our situation 25 to 16 at the 11.39 mark. And Jim, uh, you got a special deal here for us that uh, Rutgers has provided. Well, I think it's terrific. They've uh, sold those I do believe t shirts, which now I'm a believer early in this ball game. Ron and uh, Raph, they've raised over $4,000 for the Coaches versus Cancer Fund, which I think an outstanding job by Rutgers and uh, the hot shooting of Quincy Doobie. And of course, what the shirt says is, I do be believe. And uh, Jimmy has said that all game, and he may be saying it all evening. I think you gotta make them put it on the floor. Let's face it. Let's see what they start out. I think they're straight up. Now, this is their matchup now. Yep. Total match. We can drive, draw, and this team can do it for the perimeter. I think they've improved with the bounce, Jim. And you can tell when they go match up because they start pointing. I got this, you got the next one around. Now they got a kick out of here, an open look for Webb deep. Amazana, that's two on him, Bill. At the, as you noted, that's a major issue for this team. He's very creative. We mentioned the bounce. He sees things and uh, a major deterrent on the defensive end. Well, he got his 91st block of the season uh, on the last series just before we went to timeout. For his career, he's got 234. Iowa State, they, they like to run sets, and so far, most of their set looks have been to that low block. And why not? I think they've got a pound conversely. And then when you swap in the belly, you can get the kick out. Roman now in double figures. He's got 10. And Adrian Hill, number four, in the lineup. A three-pointer way off the mark. And Axe 
is there to rebound. And I was watching the Golden Hover tape, and I kept saying, they can't keep making these threes. This team does, though. And they don't... They're hot all game. There's the, what they can do against a matchup. Beautiful. And Hill to the tip with the lacrity. Now, that's zone defense that lacks man-to-man -man principles. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you really don't get in a real stance, I think, when you're in a, a zone matchup. You're sort of between the guy and the basket, but you don't move the legs to contain. Peterson. Jefferson got at least five games this year. Personal problems, and uh, you know, he's a major contributor to this team. Gives him some flexibility. He's a team captain at 15 points and a huge win over Colorado. That's about as far of a half court zone stretch that I've seen all here. They are stretched. They're going to be elastic with Doobie out there, and they come running Stinson that time. And the foul's going to be on Iowa State. And they are pointing at uh, number 22, and that's Staple. Late in the year, Shields has become more of an attack the rim guy. And again, he's going to have those kind of opportunities because you crowd him, you check his breath defensively as a shooter, he can go around you. Well, the one thing they've said is Lemonzana has said to Hill, you just get ready. If I'm in the game driving, you take it and go as strong as you can. And I just love his improvement. He screamed better. He was solid performance helping him. There's that trap we mentioned earlier. Crosses the turnover. Stenson gets it off to Blaylock, and he'll win the foot race and jam it home. It's not Mookie, but it looks good. <laughs> Young fella had 11 assists and no turnovers against Kansas this year. How about that? I mean, how good were they at home when you think of it? Big one over Kansas, big one over Texas. Texas yeah. yeah. Just the road, they got a rash. Shields, nope, and going to be grabbed down by George. And George trying to get some more minutes. They're real high on him. Big upside. Bill, they kind of brought him along slowly, didn't they? Woo. Look, it's Denson. He put it up with the hand. It's got the cast on it. And you mentioned George. He occupied a few people, Ron, and you're right. Uh, he's learning how to play on the run, but right here, you avoid the traffic, and you can see the guts of this guy, huh? He gets slapped on that hand. He claimed it's a major issue, pain, his threshold. Take it to the tent. A little smooch, Jimmy Dykes, in Manhattan. Well, that uh, dominant crossover is what set the whole thing up. That, that might be his reference point mm -hmm. as an offensive player. And everybody has to have one. That crossover might be where it all starts with his game. I think he's as good as Jamal Tinsley was as a senior. Very good, right good now. comparison, yes. 7-0 run. Gary Waters has seen it up, and he calls a timeout. Two-point ball game. A week of madness presented by Harley Davidson continues tomorrow on ESPN. 8 o'clock Eastern, it's the 2000 board Powerade Slam Fest. And at 9 o'clock, the best high school basketball players in the nation meet in a McDonald's High School All-American game. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Hey, Ron, a couple of things about that tomorrow night. First of all, word has it there may be 9, 10 kids playing that high school All-Star game tomorrow night that might be in the NBA next year. That's the talent that they have on the floor. And listen to this, Candace Parker, she enters a slam dunk competition as a girl. She wins the thing. Now we're going to all watch that. Wow. It's almost like Spud Webb jumping on the scene, right? That, hey, that's it's bigger than Spud that. Webb. Well, that tells me one thing, Ed. <laughs> if she won the slam dunk, she must have dunked more than one. Yeah, uh, exactly. Sure she, and then we got a shot of Stinson here. And Jimmy, it's interesting. His nickname at the Rucker League, which is a famous league here in, Man in Manhattan, Blue Collar. What's up with that? I mean, you think a guy that gets a, a blue collar name from a playground, they're going to call him, you know, Snoopy, Sleep Dog, <laughs> Ray Ray. Uh, they call him blue collar. Well, what you're suggesting, he doesn't like the Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Shields for three. Oh, man. Texas, said, hey, hey, I want some of this stuff. I'm 65% from beyond the arc in the tournament. I mean, they are amazing in their confidence right now. A different the, team. How about the passing to those perimeter shooters right on target so they can catch that ball in rhythm smoothly, boom, up and in. Well, you know what? They're cutting better and they're setting the defender up much better. Oops. Threw it away, turnover, and it's a second foul on Jefferson. Ron Franklin, Jimmy Dykes, along with the governor, Bill Raftery, coming to you from the first semifinal action tonight here at the Garden. Iowa State and Rutgers, Big 12 against the Big East. A 
That's five team fouls against Iowa State. You know, all great zone defensive coaches, Bill, they have to have built-in patience. Jim Beheim has that kind of patience. Think of John Chaney. John Chaney. Right. And Wayne Morgan, uh, where there was a chance to get out of the zone, he had it the first 12 minutes of this ball game. Well, years ago, people said you could never win the NCAA championship in the zone, and then uh, Heath Cole, the guy the Heath Cole, I think they a little 2-3 with uh, some pretty good talent, huh? Kelsey, Magic. Who did it last year, didn't he? Yep, exactly. Jim Beheim. And they get the offensive foul like Sandy. A little nickel dimer here in an expensive city. So we'll take a timeout and make a little money to pay in this expensive city. Five points, Rutgers on top. The four teams that have reached the NIT semifinals, and they are representation of progress. Each school is led by an African-American head coach, and we asked them if they noticed. Well, I have noticed it, and uh, I think it says a lot. I think it's the first time ever in the history of this tournament for that to happen, and I think that is very significant. I think it's a great signal uh, for college basketball and, co and basketball as a whole. And obviously, you know, our sport gets compared to other sports, and sometimes the, um, it doesn't add up as well in, in other arenas. In terms of being a, a male Division I college basketball coach, there are probably have been a few more opportunities in some, in some of the other areas, whether it be management uh, or baseball or whatever. That's a blessing, you know, that, that can say that uh, four guys that have uh, excelled in their profession to get to this point. And, I, and to me, it really doesn't matter if it's black or white, because I think coaching is coaching. Well, the NIT has always been the pace setter. It is the oldest of the tournaments, and uh, I, I, you, I'm glad that it happened to them, for them, I should say. Well, you know, it's great. It's a non-issue. Can you do the job? And that's what's beautiful about it. Exactly. Uh, you can perform and excel, and that's the way it should have been years ago, and it is now, gratefully. Ref, I think you and I both, we broke these clubs down. All we looked at was how well coached they are, <laughs> how well they execute. That's right, and, and what the kids can do and what they've been taught to do. Exactly. Stinson lost the handle on that last ball down there, and every once in a while that cast, when he gets whacked a little bit, causes him to mishandle the basket. You know what Ron talking to him before the ball game? He said, that's the one thing that will bother me in this ball game is if I get hit on top of that hand. Other than that, I'm okay to go. He got hit in the conference tournament down in Dallas twice in the Oklahoma State game, and they thought that it might have dis placed the, the fracture that he has uh, the broken bow. Tough shot here. Good shot defense. Shot pretty, clock at three. You know, guys, it's the first time we've had to bring up shot clock. I know. Pretty first straight. Time. I think that was more straight up man that particular trip. Well, listen to their timeout. I jogged over there during that last timeout, and Wayne was talking about going triangling, too. Mm -hmm. Covering guys up, making sure they matched up with the two shooters, and I'm not too sure that's not what they came out in that time. By the way, Oklahoma State does hit a few people. Oh, oh. I mean, in, in a good, in sound a good way. way. Yeah. I mean, so you're going to be tested when you play Oak State. And down screen, I think Holman gets tagged. So that's his first, the team's sixth. Did you say jog, by the way? Well, the, I tried no to sprint. The you you're taking a red eye, you can't sprint, you have to jog. <laughs> you were a little out of breath. <laughs> Raps eyes are red, you didn't fly the blade. <laughs> Well, it's a boxing one, that's what yeah, it is. They, they're they, chasing. Well, they switched it then. This is a different look. You're right. I think you were right on the first one because they had the guards match. Webb. That's it. And he's got pretty good hands here. Had a little trouble with that, baby. Mm -hmm. You spit those hands up together. Squeeze that up. Adrian Hill, after they had come up with two offensive rebounds, comes back with the score. Nice look. And the push. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Wow. Blaylock charged with a charge. I, I think it may have been Holman. No, you're right on the earlier one. I, think, I thought Holman felt he got fouled as well. I'm impressed with how well that uh, Adrian Hill for Rutgers can play with all that garb that he has on. You know something, guys? <laughs> he's not injured, and he's not covering no. up tattoos, which right. some schools have made players do. I think he's it's just chilly. Which is part of his, <laughs> said part of his outfit. He's playing on the ice here. <laughs> 11 different articles. He told me at the shoot around today that he puts on. Marquise Webb. Had some highlighters in this uh, first half, haven't we? Well, that's what's made them better, I think. They've improved at getting to the 10. It's very important when you shoot the ball as well as they do. Holman 
Allen they actually they let him go a little bit because they they don't think that he can kill him so he's going to have that shot it would appear all night he's decent with it too he's got some range he's got one percent field goal shooter he's got seven points and some of them still with the goose any iowa farm boy that grew up on a dairy farm they know how to knock down 12 or 15 footers. <laughs> well, is that all the room they have? Is that's that's about it. That's all you can do. Tonight's ESPN exclusive coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship continues. Midwest Regional Final from Norman, Oklahoma, Stanford. The number six seed takes on the number one seed, the Lady Balls of Tennessee, 9 o'clock Eastern. All a part of a week of madness presented by Harley Davidson on ESPN. That will be a ball game. If my memory serves me correctly, Tennessee beat Stanford early this year in overtime. And Tennessee right now, I'm sure they're still uh, giving their thankfuls upstairs for how their win advanced against Baylor, huh? They should. Yes, they should. There was a question in the paper today. They were trying to scrutinize that one. Do you notice the dribble again? Uh, this is a team that if you take it away, they've gotten better at analyzing. Put mm -hmm. them on the deck. Finish your five. Doobie scores his 14th point. Neal now in the ball game for Iowa State. John Neal, a 6'4", 190-pound sophomore out of Winterset, Iowa. And he's a great perimeter defender and they can make the three. A couple of big ones against Iowa. You know how important that game is in that state. What a nice job defensively. As soon as Sullivan thought he was free, Axe stepped out and picked him up. And a nice job defensively. Stinson really struggling. It's partially the defense and maybe the hands. Tenth turnover. Ooh. Too many, and this is a club that's had more turnovers than assists on the year, and that's always a red warning sign. Absolutely, they only average around 14 a game as a group. Well, it's a nine-point margin. Iowa State had cut it to two with a 9-0 run. Here's Goody. Now, this is more man. man. Yeah, see, I think they've got some wrinkles each trip, maybe on a made or a miss. And it has slowed Rutgers down a little bit, this sure. possession. So much for that. <laughs> you got to challenge shooters, though. I don't care if they make them or give them an open opportunity. Stinson. Four on three in the break, but a good job yeah. by Rutgers, and they broke down. And they left Holman free for his ninth point. And you know what I like, Ron? He didn't dunk it. They sliced him a little bit. He just made sure he put it in. Nothing fancy. Just get it done. And again, his skill set is what? Plays hard. Right? So Absolutely. he was there in front of the rim. He ran the floor to be there. The bigs running big. No matter how slow, they got his pin down on Hill. Adrian Hill with his first. So let's take a timeout. 36-29, Rutgers on top. And here's the fast break just a moment ago. Roman inside and put away by Homa. Yep. We highlight the half gas. So 36 to 29, our count. Three minutes and 48 seconds left until halftime. Jake Sullivan has had a difficult time tonight. No points. Average for the season, almost 15 per ball game. And how about Rutgers? They started off four of six from beyond the arc. Since then, only one of eight. You know what? It's the subtle tendencies uh, that Wayne Morgan has done defensively. I think has got Rutgers out of that smooth catch and shoot rhythm they had the first three or four minutes and again i like his patience defensively as a coach i think he believes in his own principles yep. therefore maybe the triangle but maybe man and then a box of one and then maybe a matchup again so he's throwing a lot of different wrinkles and sullivan he can bite you though if they get him some open looks now oh, offense put the shoulder down Ooh. staple number two i think yep it's number two on him that's right and that's 19 fouls against Iowa State and immediately Holman is going to come back into the ball game. They were getting him a little uh, break and Staple comes to the bench. Well, Staple one of those a screen slips to the goal can run the floor but when you get the early two you're not doing much running. That's right it's like Lamazano we've just now seen him again. Well, this is a little bit of a gamble I think. I agree with you. Know, you're in control in a sense but he's got to play within himself on occasion he can get out of sorts and charge We'll get a little bit out of control. Well, I think they're matched up again on the two primary shooters, and it's a uh, triangle and two. Or a one-man zone. You know, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Well, on his back. Four points for him. 
again, he will get looks because of his skill set at 6'10". See, now that's how he can bite you. He got his first clean look on a dribble handoff. Great screen. Roman. That's a, that's a poor choice on that shot right there. As he came down, no passes, and put up one from way outside. Leyla, not good. And Exani says, one and out, fellas. Maybe if I'm Iowa State, I want to keep those bigs involved in this basketball game. If you don't have a good one, back yes. it out, right? Uh, but they've been doing a nice job, solid, on the block. He's just staying in that lane, Roman. He's a straight man now. With, uh, with switching on the perimeter. Nice slip to the goal. Pretty. Well, that's Annie with a second chance. Can't get it to go, and here comes Iowa State. Wow. Deal out of bounds, unfortunately. A lot of lines here. I'll tell you, Gary Waters is disbelieving that they didn't score in the sequence down here. And Holman obviously got a clean block. No uh, no whistle. Yeah, I think Axandy rushed it a little bit. They were right there looming over him. Twelfth turnover by the Cyclones. Lemon's obviously the game, Jim. I think they got to use him if you're game. Oh, yeah. You know, you're going to get out there. Yeah. And then get him out like that. Where are you going? Where are you going? Shields. Come on. Got the long carom. And he did not hit the iron, so the shot clock. And I don't think they said 12 seconds. So they'll let me know. He's... Now, this is Doobie's range out here. They don't know. <laughs> the coach is on the other end of the floor. Can't really help him like he'd like either. Two seconds down to one, and it is rebounded by Roman. In the second half, that wouldn't have happened because the coaches are on your end. This is just what you're saying, Jimmy. Where's he going? Let the big guys get involved. We don't have a good nice steal by Doobie. Hold on. Can he do? Doobie do. After a block, the second one of the ball game by Lamazano. This is the largest lead of the night by Rutgers. Sullivan for three. Twice now he's got great looks. About 16 seconds difference, Bill, between the shot clock and the game clock. And Lovinson has got to be careful. He does not want to do anything, even on an offensive rebound. Stay away. And at the other end, even give a basket. That three, they don't know. They're looking for the end. They're too late. Too late. They were thinking the shot clock and game clock were one and the same. So that's two straight trips where once confusion, and that other shot may not have drawn iron, you know? That may have been the reason they didn't reset it. Absolutely. Coming up on the halftime report with Dave Repson and Fran Frischella. Uh, Major League Baseball opener, Ernie Kemp live, and uh, Minnesota and Duke women. That and more coming up on the halftime report. Pretty good effort, though, by Rutgers. What do you think of it? Oh, oh no question I mean, about making it. Making shots, obviously, and distance shots. Billy, the shooting percentages are now down, but listen to this. Iowa State is still at 59% because everything is inside, and Rutgers 52% from the field, even with all the misses they've got from beyond the arc. And they were 67%, what, about four minutes ago? Yeah. Uh, so the deep shots are the problem, but uh, good anticipation defensively. The guards are long. Jimmy had alluded to that. They know how to deny and play the passing lanes and right here a nice step in and off to the races and we've seen him make deep ones this one a little chippy send it in 16 for points KY. 16 points for him you know both teams are emotionally high I think Ron a lot to prove I think they both felt they deserve or warrant an opportunity uh, but failed late maybe uh, the lack of road wins in Iowa State's case and the Virginia Tech loss didn't enhance in the Big East Rutgers status but they've stepped up nicely in the NIT and frankly Wayne Morgan has to say one thing at halftime one state value the basketball because this many turnovers I don't care how well you're shooting how well otherwise you're playing you just can't do that and right now they'll take the last one if they get another 10 that's a heck of a half yeah that's a great shooting by Rutgers Stinson they get it inside and a Broman puts it up with the left hand and he was fouled that was they played with that around the ring too it may have been off to the side and I was saying two shots it was on the way up 
What a nice catch. Take a close look at it, Billy. I think that thing was touched on the rim. It's straight up in the cylinder, as we know, Ron. Straight up to the ceiling. You know what? It may have been. They were very fortunate yeah. to hit the rim. But Vroman with wonderful hands and the ability with that left hand to release it. Well, we talked about uh, Jackson. His dad started off at UCLA, then transferred to UNLV. Uh, so he played for the Wizard of Westwood, and then he played for Tart. Tart. So the bloodlines are good. Uh, his dad, an excellent ball player. And that'll do it as far as the first half is concerned. Doobie, 16 points, and uh, let's go to Jimmy Dykes, who was with head coach Wayne Morgan. Jimmy? Coach, you've played uh, several defenses this first 20 minutes. Which one worked the best, and which one will we see more of in the second 20 minutes? Uh, our defense just needs to have a lot better effort. Uh, it's not even which defense we play. The principles of the defense that we're just not adhering to, and we got to correct, okay? You want to keep that inside attack established? Yeah, we need to get the ball inside to have trouble handling us there. Okay, coach, thanks All for right, your thanks, time. Jimmy. So we are at halftime, and it's Rutgers ending it in a 13-5 run. A 10-point lead, Rutgers, Dave Repson. Let's go back to you. Okay, Ron, thanks a lot. It's a very impressive first half from the Scarlet Knights. Dave Repson along with Fran Fraschilla in our studio. And I'll tell you, that Rutgers backcourt looking great, Fran. Well, Quincy Doobie, the freshman from Brooklyn, New York, this guy can really shoot the ball. Gary Waters has got an exciting thing going on at Rutgers. He's built a program at Kent State, and he's starting to get New York and Jersey kids to stay home. Quincy Doobie is a good basketball player. Yeah, Gary Waters said to these kids before the NIT, pulled out what equated to a contract, a piece of paper, and said, look, if we're going to play in this thing, you got to promise me we're going to play hard, and they have certainly done so in the first half. Looking very good. Lots of other stuff to catch you up on. We start off with opening day in baseball. And ESPN 2's presentation of the postseason NIT. Brought to you by Audi. In technology, performance, and design, our goal remains constant. Never follow. SPN2. So far, it's been all Rutgers in the first half at the Garden. Quincy Dubin, 16 points, 4 of 6 from behind the arc, and throwing it down as well. Of course. ESPN2's presentation of the postseason NIT. Brought to you by the document company Xerox. There's a new way to look at it. 40 to 30, Rutgers on top by 10. And gentlemen, the two figures jump off this stat sheet at me. 13 turnovers, Iowa State in the first half. 20 points off turnovers. I don't care who you're playing. They're shooting 59% and they're down by 10. Can't do that. <laughs> Makes it tough, especially against the club, the Rutgers that came out locked and loaded, man. They were firing away from the three. Did a terrific job of scoring from the perimeter to establish the rhythm of this ball game early. And again, uh, this is a club only 36% so far in this ball game, Bill, but they normally shoot 50% in NIT tournament play. So that tells you they can go hot, they can go cold, and they can go right back hot again if you don't stay after them defensively. And how about going inside? Nine for 11, Roman and Hoban. That rhymes, by the way. 20 points total. Get it inside. Let the big guys do a little damage. Well, the shooting percentages uh, actually very, very good. But the amazing thing is, if you, if I told you Iowa State's at 59 percent, they're down by 10. But then you look at the turnover, and the, that's where they're getting killed. 51.6 percent for the Scarlet Knights. Well, Stinson coming back home tonight. You wonder if he might not be trying a little too hard, averaging almost 60 points a game, only three tonight. For Jake Sullivan, average is almost 15, no points tonight. Zero for three, and actually, he only had one good look. The other two were almost forces. And that's 31 points they average between them. they got to get perking, uh, maybe a little more relaxed. Sometimes uh, it'll settle in for them. And Laylock at the point now, Stinson off the ball. Guys, Iowa State with 13 turnovers and 13 made baskets. Hard to ball game for that ratio. And not a little, a nice little high low, but the turnover there, from a little too fancy. Lemonzano a little too long. Well, Rutgers has proven time and time again that they've worked on that. That's probably five of the turnovers have come off that distinct play. Shields, and I think he was held. First foul on Stinson. Mm -hmm. 
And a big concern coming in here for coaches with the lines on the floor. The NBA three-pointer, they get a walk here. Uh, the blue line being the college line. In fact, we'll talk about that with Tommy Emmerich. He said, don't go beyond the blue line. <laughs> I said, what are you talking, Ranger hockey here? <laughs> Two pass violation. Wayne Morgan held, held his kids up after the shoot around and made that exact point. Go the blue line, not the white line, guys. Go, we've done this for 10 years. I think every year we hear coaches say the same thing. You see, remember, guys, there are two lines. The first one's not for us. And that time, unfortunately, the ball went over the end line. Uh, another turnover. Some of it this time. That's unbelievable for a team that only averages roughly 14. Comeback, you got to get shots, don't you think, Chip? You got to get them, and you have to make them, and you also have to get some stops. Again, they played uh, three or four different looks in the first half. See what they stick with the second 20 minutes. Tell you what, guys, Abasano was very fortunate they called a travel on him because he could have gotten an offensive foul. He's going to be traveling again, but on the play prior to this, where the defender was set and he went right over the top of it, did lucky you, that a walk was called. It would have been his third. Did you, did you see Vlade Divac out there, though, Roman? That one, <laughs> I mean, that was an Oscar. Turn and face. He's got the fadeaway here. A little bounce or two. He likes to drop step baseline if he has it. And look, Lemonzano with the hold, and that's number three. That's the spot on the floor that Rutgers can't guard. No, they're not very good down there. They're not physical. You mentioned Lemonzano, more of a wing type of body. Yeah, he doesn't have a true NBA position at this point, not in my eyes. No. So he's got such great anticipation, though, as a leaper. That's the reason he blocks so many shots. There you go. Sullivan on the runner at the 18-29 mark. He's a tough little guy, isn't he? Yep. So his dad was a police chief? His dad you better be tough, chief. huh? That's exactly right. And, and, and Jake would like to be the chief of this team, and he is as far as a leader. And as I told you today, Bill, if there's anything that he might be guilty of, it sometimes it's trying too hard, trying to do too much. comes right back, drives it in the middle, gets the easy hook. Again, he's a scorer more than a shooter. Only a 28% three-point guy, so again, he catches his first and second instinct over the head, attack the rim. We're stepping up the pressure a little bit. I think you've got to cut against this song in the middle. Or dribble drive, one of the two. Got a little fancy with the pass, they turn it over. Here's Blaylock, bounces off to home play and he took a sudden it's a 6 0 run he took away the defense too turned the back a little more hop in their step right now so we'll take a break 17 28 left here's a look at that uh, fast break laylock off to holman Welcome back to Madison Square Garden. Iowa State starting to cut in the lead just a little bit. I love the effort by Jackson Broman, number four in white. Watch him where he starts and where he's going to finish. A kid that's 6'10", has terrific speed. He can run and he will run. And again, he's uh, ambidextrous around that rim, can jump left-footed, right-footed, finish right hand, left hand. He's a hard match. He can swim, too. He can swim, too, and play soccer. They say he's amphibious. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Wayne Morgan said it to shoot around today as he took time to visit with us. Uh, he says he's the hardest working big man that uh, that I've ever been around. As you look at the Star Watch comparison, Roman 13 points, six of seven for the field. Lamazana in foul trouble, only four points for him. You know, Ron, you talked about Roman's uh, growing up playing soccer. How many soccer kids have we seen over the years that are big kids? Well, you would benefit from, from it. exactly. This building with the, yeah. his name or his uh, letter. Up in the ref, there's a lot of guys. I think mostly international players. I believe uh, Hakeem played yeah, soccer he did. these days. Holman got a piece of that one right there, and it's on the floor, and Holman with the hustle. Numbers. Gets it off to Blaylock. Three on one. Stinson. An old-fashioned bounce pass, Jimmy Dykes. They get the numbers. It's nice when you have choices. Boy, terrific effort again by the bigs of Iowa State. Look at him double up that basketball. Big fella gets on the floor to save it. And now it's a rip and run to the other end for Iowa State. And their aggressive level has taken to another level in the second 20 minutes. Wayne did not seem happy with you. Or maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was his team's play. He wasn't happy with anyone with an air shot when he left the floor at halftime. 
I imagine that locker room needed a little, uh, <laughs> a little dusty. A little fire retardant on the wall. A little less dust. Paint was warping. <laughs> well, it's a one point ball game, a 9 0 run by the folks from Ames. Stuck on 40 for Rutgers. Shields. Oh, that's a quick, quick jump. Moving backwards. Knocks it down. Stinson taking it right to him with a fine with home and diving to the tip. Heck of a play with the dribble drive by Stinson. No, and again, the bigs of Iowa State permitted to run. Absolutely, and very alertly as well. A lot of guys stand there and wait and see what materializes. Sullivan on Doobie holds up too hard in the shot. Lamazana tips it back out into the first 35. The first one was too close. <laughs> He does have range. After the first four, though, he's uh, got kind of icy. And, and I think Jimmy was mentioning the change of the nice post feed and a recovery by Lemonzano. I think it's his third of the night. It is 93 on the season, 237 for his career. You know what? Lemonzano doesn't leave until the shooter leaves, but then the quickness up top. Terrific. Look at Homer now. He's not even guarding Alexander. That's why I think he can be free and be a factor here. Bring it to him and maybe make the pass. And nobody posts up in the lane. Shields had an open look out there, and Holman grabs off still another rebound. Ooh, high dribble got away with it, but it was all right. Sensor battled Lamazano. Lamazano, in the last two trips, has taken a chance on the block, and also that one with a guy with three fouls. <laughs> Take a break. Lamazano with his third block of the night as it goes up and it comes right back out. Rutgers leading by one. Uh, there is the Oregon team already in the building here at Madison Square Garden. Luke Jackson looking on. They will follow 20 minutes after this first ball game with the game number two of our semifinals tonight. Uh, Jimmy not only does announcing, he's gone into floor work. What do you got there? You know what? Hilton Coliseum on Iowa State's campus, it actually flooded in 1993. So they uh, carved up the floor, auctioned it off. And Iowa State has obviously struggled on the road all year, so they took this actual piece of the floor with them from 1993 to Florida State. They touched it before they left the locker room. They touched it again at halftime. They won at Florida State. So obviously the first thing they pack on their road trip to New York is again Hilton Coliseum floor from 1993, trying to take some of the magic of Hilton that's, on the road with them. I like the plan. That's People what they call it, uh, up in Ames, Hilton magic. Yeah. People have said we're a little touched, so why not touch the board too? But you know, at Seton Hall, we had the opposite end of a parquet. It was the most yeah. unbelievable. It was a great home court advantage. We had more dead spots than uh, you might find at <laughs> the local cemetery. Yeah, and you still managed to lose. Yeah, the we we inverted everything. In fact, the rank one loss record as well. <laughs> that is a great home court. Over the years, Johnny, oh, was the first time I went up there. Jeff Greer, of course, all American. Well, when that place flooded. It flooded now, didn't it? Yeah, it was up uh, over over ten feet inside the building. Bill's right, though. It was, it was great fun. And Johnny Orr would take the court, and, and the kids would go, here's Johnny. Shot clock down to three, down to two. Nope, it's off the mark. Sullivan rebounds. And look at the bigs run, just as you noted, Tim. And the hold up. Blaylock, blocked. Amazana would block number four. They go right back to Blaylock. Intimidated, and therefore, he missed the shot. Nice shot by Amazana. Hang it tough. Yeah, really tough. Adrian Hill back into the lineup, number four. That's where I think he's tough. Didn't get it up the top enough. Oh, my goodness. What a great oh, oh, my goodness. And Stinson just was working his magic, looking for himself. And you get a bailout when you hustle like that. For two of this run. What a big fella. Well, it's the first lead since Iowa State was on top six to five. Well, I know it's a simple point that we're driving home about the bigs of Iowa State to run, but from a coaching standpoint, you and I both know it's not easy to get guys to commit for 40 minutes when they're 6'10 and 240. Well, you know what helps when the little guys are unselfish like that, exactly. too? That really makes them feel good. Doobie, nope. Great job inside by Adrian Hill, the sophomore out of Canton, Ohio. A.H. likes a tag to ten. What is that to do? That's his game. Aggressive. Good pump. Sullivan, a little short on that one. Roman comes away with it. He 
Notice how to pin a guy and keep his arms down. He'll never gun him up. Sullivan on the run, and he gets that hook. You know what he does awfully well? When he sells the pump fake, his eyes go to the rim. A lot of guys don't do it. They'll pump fake, and they're looking right at you. He sells it completely. And he is not afraid to get in and get hit, too, with the bounce. Sullivan tried to contain, could not. Doopy prevails. Student section, not booing. It's for booing. Well, he's with 18 points now. Ooh, and they got an inside screen out of Roman. Hits the deck. I think Hill may have discarded him. That's going to be three fouls on Adrian. Lamazana can uh, change the game on both ends of the floor, but especially defensively because, again, how quickly he can elevate. Has great hands, uh, keeps balls in play. Look at him up, boom, just gets you up top. Just his presence. Don't you love his effort? Oh, yeah. no question. Just keeps and after it. And they, they have set him down. He's been in some pretty close skirmishes here. He's playing with three fouls, so he'll go out at the 1247 mark. Take it ahead here. Can't have him on the pitch. Yeah, because if I'm Iowa State now, my first, second, and third option every time is inside. Absolutely. And, and now Hill has to go to the bench as well, picking up his third. Well, what impressed you about Roman, he can do so many things on the box, too. Create. Gets to the free throw line. Oh, no. Jefferson maybe got away with the charge. And Roman had loaded up. They haven't even watched him. There, they finally get it to him. This guy's got a little game. He can bounce himself to ecstasy or post. Stinson. Well, Shields thought that it should have been a tie ball, or a big part of the duty he thought it should have been a tie ball, but he had his arm instead. It's only his first. Do you get the feeling they're bunched up, though, Iowa State right now? Spacing is yeah. not very much. Yeah. The passing lane isn't what it could be. One grenade would get them all. You don't like that <laughs> offensively, do you? No. Oh, it leads to your demise, obviously. Of the four teams at the NIT, this is the worst shooting of the team, 65%. And, and consider, if they didn't have Jake Sullivan at 93%, what would they be? Yeah, they, when a couple of 50s jump out of you, that's uh, not in your best interest come stretch time. Stinson gets them both. All right, there's the number seven career uh, NCAA free throw shooter in history, Jake Sullivan. That's how good he is. To the dictionary under Jim Rat, and you'll find uh, J A K E. Coach has said he almost had to lock the door to get him out. Common denominator with all great shooters, hours and hours and hours shooting that ball. Well, he doesn't forget to shoot, but uh, he forgot his shaver, fellas. Wigan, woo! And they, got, they got a chance here. This is Neil, back to Roman. The bouncer, Neil, left alone, and the shot is rejected. Axani gets it. Pretty. And then staple foul by Axani. Uh, they've got some spirit. We mentioned Sullivan over there. He's a plug. But Neil, uh, they visited Notre Dame, as you know. And they drove out the field. They looked at touchdown. Jesus. Got a look at this great football field. They started chanting, Rudy, Rudy. And guess who's Rudy on this team? John Neal. That's right. And you might hear the attack aggressively get to the free throw line. What they tell us today, John Neal from Winterset, Iowa, the birthplace of John Wayne. Sure. Anyone born in the same town as John Wayne, you know, is going to have some grit, some, <laughs> some toughness, toughness, some effort about him, right? That's a reason. Really really <laughs> you talk to John Neal, sometimes he refers to you as Pilgrim. <laughs> we'll take a break. The two-point lead, Iowa State. we got a good one going.